The children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also. How do you like that for redundancy? He himself likewise also partook of the same that through death he might render powerless, the Greek says paralyzed, him who had the power of death, that is who? The devil. Fifteen. And might deliver those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Are we a bunch of slaves to sin? Huh? Outside of Christ, yes. Yeah. So, what we're dealing with here is a solution, again, that who has accomplished for us? Jesus. And how did he do it? Before he could physically be crucified, he had to what? Submit, subordinate his will. Before Stephen allowed himself to be stoned to death, what did he have to do? Submit, subordinate what? His will. His will. And then he was ready to pray for those that were stoning him to death. When you submit, subordinate your will, then you're willing to die on the cross or be burned at the stake like us and Jerome were and singing songs of praise to God. How do you like that scene? That's the only way a human being can be willing to be crucified, stoned to death, or burned to death until they have first submitted the will to God. So, what happens if I choose not to abide in that victory that Christ gives me? <laughs> I revert back to Romans 6.6. 6. The old man is driving the old bus again. How did Jesus live his life on this earth? By turning his body over to whom? To the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to drive him. And that's what Romans 8, 4 is saying. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in those that do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. I call the Spirit the designated driver. Because Jesus chose to what? Use the designated driver, the Holy Spirit, to what? Drive his bus, his body. Now to the famous verse, we're going to have to skip 19. I'll read it, I'll read it to you, uh, Galatians 2, 19. By the way, I really enjoy your questions, your participation, because that's what this is all about. Uh, Galatians 2, 19. For through the law, I died to the law, that I might live to God. Isn't that beautiful? Through the provisions that the law provides, you know, because the law cannot what? Justify it. It, it's a standard, but it cannot do anything for me. So, through the law and its standard, what did I do? I died to the law. How? The same way that Jesus did. The law is a mirror. It is a description of God's character. Okay? But it's also a mirror for me to see what I look like. And when I look into that mirror and I see what I look like, and I see the character of God revealed, I have a choice. Do I want to continue to look the way that I look now? Or do I want to look the way that God looks? That's our choice. That's the purpose of the law. It's only a mirror. It was never intended for anything else more than a mirror. It's interesting, it's interesting to me what the author of the book Desire of Ages says regarding character. Because the law is a, character, is a reflection of God's character. This is found in Desire of Ages, page 762, uh, briefly. The law requires righteousness, a righteous life, a perfect character. And this man has not to give. He cannot meet the claims of God's holy law. But Christ coming to earth as man lived a holy life and developed a perfect character. Did Adam and Eve need to develop a perfect character in the Garden of Eden before they sinned? No, they were made in God's image. So... Here you have the issue of the nature of Christ. He had to develop a perfect character because he took on upon his sinless divine nature my what? My nature. These he offers as a free gift to all who will receive it. 
His life stands for the life of men. Thus, they have remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. More than this, Christ imbues men with the attributes of God, His character. He builds up the human character after the similitude of the divine character, a goodly fabric of spiritual strength and beauty. Thus, the very righteousness of the law is fulfilled in the believer in Christ. God can be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And now for the famous, famous verse in chapter 2 of Galatians. Some of you know my memory. Galatians 2. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I still have a pulse. Yet not I, but Christ living in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself. Amen. Any questions on what we've covered this morning? Thank you. <clears throat> Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for meeting with us through the Holy Spirit. And we pray that what we have learned intellectually will become a reality in our lives as we choose to do what Jesus did. And that, that is to access His faith. And now that that faith has conquered Satan and sin, we claim by the faith of Jesus that we will experience the same victory so that your name will be honored, glorified, and your law of love can be vindicated. We thank you for answering these requests because we ask you in Jesus' name.